Okay, um, this video is for my Calculus 1 students, and we're talking about antiderivatives and motion. And so I have a problem here about a stone that is dropped from the upper observation deck, the space deck of the CN Tower, 450 meters above the ground. So before we get started, we're going to write down, list everything we know. Well, we know acceleration due to gravity. acceleration due to gravity and they're doing this in meters is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared okay so that's one of the things we know what's another thing we know we're dropping it from a, a distance of 45 450 meters so that's our position function so s of zero when time was zero or our original distance our height is 450 meters what else do we know they said they dropped it so our initial velocity is going to be actually zero meters per second because we're just dropping it we're not throwing it with any kind of speed all right so that's everything we know now they want us to find the distance of the stone above the ground level at time t. So we're just looking for the equation from the information that we know. So we're going to algebraically start. We know a of t is going to be equal 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. Now we're going to go backwards and find our velocity. Our velocity at time t, we're going to do an antiderivative. It's going to be negative 9.8 t. And don't forget your constant. Okay, now because we know that v sub zero is zero, we're actually going to plug that in to see what the c is. So negative 9.8 times zero plus c, and it equals zero. So now it tells us our c is zero. So our actual velocity equation is going to be just negative 9.8 t, which is kind of cool if you think about it because. Um, if you're just dropping it, there's no other force. So that, that makes sense to me because you're just dropping it and letting, you're just letting the um, acceleration due to gravity pull it down. Okay. Now we're looking for our position. So let me extend this page a little bit more. So we're going to do the antiderivative again. So our position function is I'm going to make that t squared, multiply that by half. I get negative 4.9 t squared plus c. Now, the other thing we knew that S sub 0 is 450, so this is dropped from the top, so I can actually plug in S sub 0 is negative 4.90 squared plus C, and it equals 400. And as you can see, C is going to be 400. And then when I'm all done, I now have a position function of S of T equals negative 4.9 T squared plus 400. Now we can start with that because that's our position function. If I took the derivative, that'd be my velocity. Take the derivative, that'd be my acceleration. Okay, so we're going to take that, take it to the next page, I, same picture. Now I want to know how long does it take the stone to reach the ground? So I know if this, I want it to reach the ground, my height is going to be zero. So I'm going to take that equation I just found, which is negative 4.9 t squared plus 450 and put it equal to zero. So I'm going to actually go solve this. So I got negative 4.9 t squared equals negative 450. Divide through by negatives, I get t squared is going to be 91.8367. Now if I take the square root, there is a plus and minus, but the minus doesn't really apply here because we're talking about time. So we get our time to be 9.58 seconds that it takes for that stone to hit the ground. Now we want to know with what velocity does it hit the ground with, okay? Well, our velocity equation is f of t, v of t, excuse me, is negative 9.8t. So if I see that at 9.8 seconds, I'm going to plug that there then I can figure out what velocity it hit the ground with. So the velocity at 9.8 seconds is going to be negative, oh, excuse me, 9.58, sorry. At 9.58 seconds is going to be 
negative 9.8 times 9.58. So it hits the ground with a velocity of negative 93.884 meters per second, which is pretty fast in that direction. And it, all they did was just drop it. Okay, let's look at the next page. Same picture. Next question. If a stone is thrown up downward with a speed of five meters per second, how long does it take to reach the ground? So we do know here that V sub zero now has a speed of negative five meters per second, and it's negative because I'm throwing it towards the ground, so the direction is shown negative. So if I want to find V of t is going to be negative 9.8 t plus my constant, I now I'm going to plug in that zero to find out what my new velocity equation is going to be. And that's going to equal negative 5. So my c comes out to be negative 5. So my new velocity equation is going to be negative 9.8 t minus 5 because you're throwing it with a speed um, down to the ground. Okay, now they want to know how long is it going to take to reach the ground. So basically, I've got to come up with my new position function and then go ahead and find out what it would be. So my new position function is going to be s of t. I'm going to do antiderivative, so it's going to be negative 4.9t squared. So I'm going to add 1, divide by 2. And then I've got minus 5t plus c. And... I know S of 0 is still 450, so S of 0, it's still the same height. So C still comes out to be 450. Okay, so my new equation, my new position equation is now S of T is going to be negative 4.9 T squared minus 5t plus 450. So this is always kind of cool to do this to say, all right, all I did between the first one besides dropping it and now I'm actually throwing it, you can see how it changes your equation and um, you can start getting some ideas on how, patterns that you can see. Now they still want to know uh, when it hits the ground. So I still want to know when my height is zero. So I'm going to put this equal to zero. So I've got negative 4.9t squared minus 5t plus 450 equals 0. And I'm going to stack and rack to do my quadratic equation. Now my d on this comes out to be 8,000, whoops, 8,845. So my new time that it takes to hit the ground is 5 plus or minus radical 8 eight four five all over two times negative four point nine and so when I do my plus minus I get a negative ten point one oh six nine which we're going to reject because negative time doesn't mean anything in here so then I get nine point oh eight six five two or roughly nine point oh nine seconds so how does this compare from just dropping it? So it took 9.09 .09 seconds to hit the ground when I actually threw it with some velocity. Let's ba look back here. When I just dropped it, it took 9.58. So I did get to the ground a little bit quicker. So that's interesting as well. And that's it for this one problem.